Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. Today we're going to be showing you the culmination of a, this year's project, the gun I call the Latter Day Detonics. Now I'm going to be recovering some territory here if you've seen the original videos, but for those who've come in late, we'll be going over a bit of it again. But before we get started, I would like to thank my Patreons and other channel supporters, particularly Evan, who made this possible in ways that will become clear shortly. <laughs> if you'd like to join my Patreon supporters, it would help a great deal because everything costs money, ammo, guns, all of this stuff. So there's a link to my Patreon account in the description below. If you would like to join my supporters, it would be much appreciated. The Detonics Combat Master was the first subcompact service caliber handgun to achieve any sort of commercial success, and it was the first functional commercially produced subcompact 1911. And it was quite revolutionary in its time, which was mostly the late 70s, early 80s. And uh, it introduced a lot of very unique features that are kind of uh, hallmarks of the industry today. But it is a 40-year-old gun, and thinking has changed somewhat about a variety of things in the intervening 40 years. So I came up with the idea of a sort of a what would Detonics do gun. And the idea was to produce a modern version of the Combat Master, which I have done. So we're going to get into it on the tabletop and do a deep dive into this gun and its companion, the other reimagined Detonics Combat Master. So let's get into it. Okay, let's start with a look at the original Detonics. It has a fully captured recoil system and a bull barrel, which for 1911s was pioneered by the designer of this pistol, Pat Yates, and Detonics purchased the rights to it. So, disassembly is pretty much standard 1911. You will note that Detonics thoughtfully moved the disassembly notch much further back, making it pretty easy to tear things down if you're not doing a video. <laughs> so, because there wasn't room for conventional springs of sufficient strength at the time, they used a multi-coil system, with, uh, which is fully captured, which is very convenient. And instead of having a simple plate at the back, they introduced this device, which rides here and gives you just a little more clearance for the springs. Now, the original springs are getting hard to come by, and I've replaced them with an EGW flat coil, flat wire coil spring that works quite well and is simple. The bull barrel doesn't just replace the bushing with the flare of the barrel. When a gun comes back into battery, it is pushed against these two surfaces, sort of what they call the V-block, so that it always consistently returns to the same position every time. And uh, these guns had a reputation for being more accurate than a gun their size really had any right to be, and that was part of it. So, people did various workarounds to get past the Deutonics patent. Colt, when they introduced their officer's model, <coughs> pardon me, introduced, they removed one of the locking lugs and introduced an oversized bushing with a coned barrel. Because the oversized, the standard size bushing in a gun this short would smash into the recoil the locking lugs, rather. And that was a workaround. And it worked reasonably well. But it offered none of the benefits of a uh, of the bull barrel in terms of the way it locks up and all the other things and how it simplifies the mechanism. So, let's get this put back together. Now, this 
between this and the fitting of the barrel, this piece, putting them back together can be a little fussy. It's not bad. I mean, you get used to it. But it's not as simple as... It's not as simple as it is on a stock 1911. There's a little bit of fiddling and fussing that has to go on to get everything positioned properly. And, of course, the guide rod can do funny things and get out of position. There we go. But you can pull it out and twist it so it gets it positioned nicely. And, uh, very innovative gun, especially in its time. But, as said, that time was 40 years ago. So, the changes I've made on the latter-day Teutonics, where I extended the grip, or rather cut the grip, at officer's length, rather than as short as this, because with the standard magazines, I can only really get two fingers on the grip, and the other one trails below. Now, yes, I've solved that on mine with this base pad, and that does do good things for control. But making it just a hair longer with a deeper undercut behind the trigger guard. It does good things for control, and it's only three-eighths of an inch longer, so it does not overly affect concealability. And I've contoured the back of the magwell funnel, um, which, not having a sharp edge there is not just more comfortable, but it has a disproportionately large effect on concealability. I've also added a bumper pad to the eight round magazine, and these are Mechgar magazines based on, in part, on my own experience and in part on the recommendations of Peter Dunn, one of the men who helped develop the uh, original prototype into a commercial product for Detonics. Now, takedown, of course, is standard bushingless 1911. You just Bring it back to the takedown notch, pop this out from the other side, and slide off the frame. But here's where we start seeing the differences. This is not a fully captured recoil system. You have to push it out manually, insert a bent piece of wire, paper clip, whatever, in there to capture it, and then you can remove it. And this also uses the flat coil recoil system, but it has much more of the standard plate that you would expect on the guide rod of a 1911. And um, the full-length guide rod and spring are EGW, but the recoil cap is a custom one I made just for this gun. The barrel is a bull barrel based on and very much like the Detonics bull barrel. But this one has a full support chamber with a full-size ramp. So it gives you a little bit, a little bit better containment for plus P loads and things like that. And the one piece fixed ramp makes for better feeding. Uh, I've also cut the crown in the aesthetically pleasing, but not actually useful, deep conical crown because I like it. Um, Another variation is the sights, which are a SIG fiber optic front and a custom aircraft aluminum rear that I fabricated with 40 line per inch checkering on the back to reduce glare and 40 line per inch checkering on the front for traction if you have to do an emergency cycling against a belt, a tabletop, edge, door frame, varsity cheerleader, whatever. And uh, while it's got a lot of traction, it is not sharp and won't gore you. So, reassembly is pretty much just like the Detonics, except you've got this thing in the way. And with the standard flat plate back here, it's less fussy. Also, this barrel is fitted so that there is no side-to-side -side movement so there's no issues getting everything straight going back into the frame. And a 
reassembly as a consequence is less fussy. Pop it all together, remove the piece of wire, and you're back in business. And this gun also has bumper pads because the magwell kind of makes those necessary. So, that is the Latter-day Teutonics built to my thoughts about what it should be if it were made today. However, this is not the only Latter-day Teutonics because I made another one. Because the deal that Evan proposed is that he would purchase the parts if I made him one, too. So I made two guns. And because variety is the spice of life and I get bored, this one is different. Now, this uses a modified Packmeyer flat main spring housing, very much like the originals used. And while it has the same nub back end, that the original Combat Master has, this is a functional grip safety, because why not? This also has an EGW lightened hammer and um, fire control group. And again, about three and a half pounds. Very little take up, very little over travel. But I have shortened the rail to be more consistent with the original length dust cover. And of course, this has a deeper notch than the original, so I made, I shortened the dust cover to match. But other than that, it's pretty much the same set of features as the one I did for me. It has the ambidextrous extended and shaved down um, safety, functional grip safety, officer's model length, magwell funnel, base plates G10 in this case, which matches the G10 grips, and uh, the shortened dust cover. But it also has the SIG sights and the custom aircraft aluminum rear. Now, because Evan has older eyes, like mine, this one, the sights are a little different. While it has the SIG fiber optic front, it has a generous U-notch in the rear, so it's very easy to get the sights lined up quickly. And again, in test firing, the lack of a beaver tail had no effect on hammer bite or anything. So, all good. So, after a one week in arrangement, this will be legally transferred to Evan. And uh, I may, we'll talk about grips and stuff between him and I. Anyway, so that's the basic differences between the two guns. Oh, and one thing I will mention specifically is I use the alloy frame, and this gun is a full half pound lighter than this gun. Which, you know, ain't nothing. And yet, because of the 9mm caliber, and it doesn't give up anything in terms of putting shots on target rapidly. So, I'm very pleased with how this has come out. One of the surprising things about the original Combat Master was that, yes, of course, in 45 caliber, a small gun has significant recoil, but the lighter slide and recoil system meant that these guns cycled a measured 30% faster than a standard government model, which meant they always came back on target extremely quickly. They were really, I mean fantastic for double taps and things at close range and accurate rapid fire, which is not what you would expect from a small version of a full-size service pistol. And the name Combat Master. The gun was really more about concealment than, you know, being the ultimate gunfighting tool. So I always found the name Combat Master a little incongruous, but, you know, you go with it. I stuck with that Combat Master concept a little bit more with this gun because, yes, this is a concealable semi-subcompact, but it's also kind of set up as sort of a pocket race gun with features like the magwell funnel, the checkering here and here, the extra weight under the barrel despite the lighter overall weight of the frame. And, you know, it's really 
designed from the ground up and specialized for accurate double taps and rapid fire at combat distances. So in a sense, it's more of a combat master than the original. <laughs> but in a sense, it's not because it's slightly less concealable and it's in 9mm, not 45, and yada, yada, yada. I am sure that every single person who has the idea of a modern iteration of the combat master would come up with different ideas and solutions. Because, hey, we're individuals and, you know, if you can't make a custom gun that matches your personal preferences, why bother? But, uh, I'm very satisfied with what I've produced. It is, in a sense, the perfect combat master for me, which is kind of the point of doing a project like this. Anyway, I love it, and I'm going to be shooting it extensively. Once it's a little more proven, um, this is likely to become my main carry gun because I just, I like it that much and it does what I want a carry gun to do, which is precision fire at high speed. <laughs> so that's that. If you like the video, and if you're still watching at this point, I suspect you did, please hit the like button because it helps a great deal with the visibility of this channel. And um, again, if you want to offer more material support, there's a link below to my Patreon account, but we've already covered that. So I hope this finds you well, stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.